Mr. Speaker, the Money Laundering Procurement Act, number 13, 1220, the Act, has been identified in St. Lucia's forefront mutual evaluation as being deficient for the purposes of complying with the Financial Action Task Force recommendations, more specifically, the Financial Action Task Force Recommendation 26 with respect to regulation and supervision of financial institutions. Uh, Minister of Finance, I don't want to interrupt you, but I need to remind members who may not have gotten the money laundering amendment in the package over the weekend, that is because it was circulated in September. So every member ought to have a, a copy from the last meeting in September. Sorry, Prime Minister, you can proceed. The Financial Intelligence Authority, the authority, has therefore proposed various amendments to the Act for compliance. The bill contains various amendments, including an amendment to broaden the scope of the definition for beneficial owner, so that the beneficial owner also includes an individual or natural person on whose behalf a transactional activity is being conducted. The list of persons with whom the authority can disseminate information is also expected to include the special prosecutor and the chief executive officer or the citizenship by investment unit. The bill also makes it mandatory for, for a financial institution or person engaged in other business activity to establish the true identity of the other person on whose behalf or for whose benefit a person may be acting in a proposed transaction and not simply to demonstrate that it has taken reasonable steps to establish the customer's liability identity. The authority must approve the appointment of a compliance officer at the management level with a financial institution. However, in the case of a licensed financial institution, the central bank is required to consult with the authority for approval of the appointment of a compliance officer. The bill makes it clear that a financial institution or person engaged in other business activity may decide to conduct customer due diligence even after having previously conducted a customer due diligence, obtaining adequate data about a customer. In conducting a customer due diligence, a financing institution may require a person to complete a source of funds declaration. At present, the value of a transaction is specified at 10,000 United States dollars. However, the bill seeks to change the value of a transaction to 27,000 Eastern Caribbean dollars, which is the equivalent exchange at 270. In addition, the bill includes an offense provision where a person fails to declare his or her source of funds. The fraud takes that offense provision was inadvertently removed from the act was when the act was amended in 2021. The bill introduces a new provision to, to prohibit a person from using or having possession of property while knowing that that property, whether in whole or in part, directly or directly, represents his or her proceeds of criminal conduct. With these legislative amendments, Senator hopes to improve its technical compliance with rating at the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force plenary and working group meeting that is scheduled to take place in November 2024. Mr. Speaker, as this bill, as I just said, Mr. Speaker, it's an amendment to the Money Laundering Prevention Act, Mr. Speaker, to make it more in line with after an evaluation was done in St. Lucia's fourth round mutual evaluation report, Mr. Speaker. See, Mr. Speaker, we are part of a broader financial world, and St. Lucia must meet these requirements, Mr. Speaker. And part of these requirements means that any time you go to the bank with U.S. dollars, in that case, more than 10,000 U.S. dollars, you must have a source of funds, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, sometimes our citizens complain that even if the amount is less than 10,000 U.S. dollars, they are still as a source of funds. So, Mr. Speaker, we hope that the in the in, in the financial institutions follow the law, Mr. Speaker. But um, clients 
and not brought to a point which is near harassment, Mr. Speaker. We hope good sense prevails, but these laws have to be followed because this is not a bank that's making these laws or the government that's forcing these laws upon the people, Mr. Speaker. If we want to be part of the international financial situation, financial institutions or the financial world, we have to follow these laws. So, Mr. Speaker, even we politicians, we are the ones who suffer the most because we are called peps, politically exposed persons, Mr. Speaker. And your whole, your every part, and I'm sure the Minister, of the Parliamentary Rep. is is suffers from that, from being a pep, Mr. Speaker. And, and, and sad, he's right. Your family also, Mr. Speaker. I mean, he's right. You, your family, I mean, it really is, it's got to a point, Mr. Speaker, where as soon as you become a, a politician, you're classified as a pep, and then the rest is history. But, Mr. Speaker, there is still some hope for us because the, just recently the courts in the UK passed a law saying that some of these laws against us are discriminatory. And I hope that the powers that are listening in St. Lucia, the AG, <laughs> understand that, Mr. Speaker. And when our, our officials go to debate and discuss these things, Mr. Speaker, with people who in their own countries that law is not so, so, so strident. In our own countries, that law is not so strident. It's like, it's like opening a bank account. Although now I understand, it's a little easier to open a bank account, Mr. Speaker. You can walk into a, 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 any bank in New York and, or Miami and open a bank account. But in our island, Mr. Speaker, but that's what you have to do when you are a small island. You have to pay for these things. We want to comply, but we're asking our local, our local officials to be a little less to understand that the limit is $27,000 and unless you have reason to be, to be real suspicious, do not put clients through what they put them. Taxi drivers, vendors, Mr. Speaker, go through this, 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 this hassle, Mr. Speaker. People get remittances from abroad in, 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 from, in, um, from the relatives in the U.S., Mr. Speaker. They have to go through that, that, that hassle. And we asking we asking the compliance officers to be a little you could you could know the history of a client, Mr. Speaker. Because everybody in St. Lucia, we have a small country. Everybody knows who is who. But, so, but the regular citizen, the regular vendor who is hustling, Mr. Speaker, don't put them through that kind of, of, of stress for two, three thousand dollars which they might collect from the cruise ships. From the cruise ship passenger, Mr. Speaker. So I urge members to support it. We have to do it, we have to comply. Because if we have to remain in the international financial world, we have to follow the rules. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.